Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to connect to a HTTP2 uh, server using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DevRobot. So, uh, this tutorial uh, follows the previous one where I have explained uh, how to install the SH2lib uh, wrapper from IDF, so I'm assuming that you have already uh, done the procedure and you have already access to these functionalities. Uh, in some, this is a wrapper uh, that works on top of the lower level ngHttp2 uh, library, uh, which is a library that is included as an IDF component uh, to work with HTTP2. Um, so, Basically, uh, I'm assuming that you have already covered uh, that and I'm going to leave a, a link in the description for the video that explains how to install the SH2lib wrapper in case you haven't done it yet. So, moving on to the actual code. The first thing we are going to do is including the Wi-Fi.edge library. Uh, so, we first connect the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network before, obviously, uh, we try to connect to the server. Uh, one of the big advantages of uh, being able to, to use the, uh, a, the IDF code here in the Arduino core uh, is that for the features that we need to go to the lower level uh, such as using the HTTP2 uh, which is not yet implemented uh, as a higher level abstraction in the Arduino core yet so uh, for those features uh, we need to resort uh, to, the, to the IDF APIs but for all the other features such, uh, uh, such as connecting the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network uh, we can simply use the Arduino code that we are, um, uh, that we are used to uh, and this makes our life much easier. So basically, uh, we, we are going to include the Wi-Fi.edge library to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network so we can use the, the interface and the, the APIs that we have been using before in all the other tutorials. So other than that, um, we need to include the sh2lib.edge uh, wrapper. Uh, this is, as I've already mentioned, a wrapper built on top of ngHttp2 that will make our life easier uh, when working with uh, uh, HTTP2 features. As I've uh, mentioned in the previous video, uh, where I explained how to install this uh, this uh, this wrapper as an Arduino library, uh, so we need to enclose this include uh, in an extern C block because it contains C code uh, that cannot be compiled uh, using the, uh, the Arduino core uh, using the, the the normal configuration. So we need to include this extern C, uh, thus indicating the, the existence of that C code. Uh, so the compiling procedure uh, works correctly. After that, uh, since we are going to connect the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network, we need to declare uh, the credentials of the network, more precisely the network name, uh, or in short SSID, uh, and the password. Moving on to the setup, we are going to open a serial connection, as usual, to output some results from our program, and then in this block we are simply going to connect to a Wi-Fi network like we usually do uh, when coding in the Arduino core. So from this point onward, we are going to start to interact with the sh2lib library, and as I've already mentioned in the previous video, this is a little bit more lower level that we are used to when using the Arduino uh, core uh, abstractions, the higher level uh, classes that make our life easier, uh, but it, it's not that that of a big deal. I'm going to to as I'm going to explain you, um, this is not that hard to use. Uh, it's just a little bit more lower level. So the first thing that we are going to need is to declare here a struct uh, of this type, sh2lib underscore handle, and basically this handle. Um, will be used uh, in all the uh, in all the sh2lib calls that we are going to do not in this tutorial but also in future tutorials where we are going to explore uh, a little bit more of other features uh, so basically this uh, this struct uh, is what uh, will hold uh, the lower level sessions of um, of tls uh, and the lower level session of ngHttp2. Obviously, this is a, an implementation detail that we don't need to worry about, and that is later we just need to declare here this, uh, this variable and pass it to the functions that we are going to call. And then to connect to the HTTP2 uh, server, uh, before we can do any kind of request or, or, the, or other type of procedure, we need to connect to the server explicitly. 
and we simply need to call this sh2lib underscore connect function and as first input it receives the address uh, of our previously declared uh, struct so basically this is the first input uh, that this function receives and then as second input it receives a string uh, with the URL of the server to which we want to connect to. Uh, this is basically a testing server that is available. Uh, you can directly access this link from your browser and explore it uh, a little bit, but it is basically a testing HTTP2 server that implements some functionalities uh, that we can use to test a client, such as doing some requests. But in this tutorial, we are not going to do any actual request yet. We are going to cover that uh, in future tutorials. So basically, if everything goes right, uh, this function call should return uh, this constant, ASP underscore OK. So we are going to use this for error checking. And obviously, if, if the return value is different from this, we know that there was some problem connecting to the HTTP2 server. And then we simply return because there's no point in trying to, to do anything else. Uh, otherwise, if everything is um, works successfully, then we will just print a, a message indicating that we are connected to the server. And then this is just more for information. If you want to access the host name uh, of the server that we are connected to, after we establish the connection, um, our handle, our, uh, our previously declared struct here, has a field called hostname. That is filled uh, with the name of the with the host name of the server that we are reaching, and this field is filled after we call this connect function with success. So just for information, I'm printing here uh, the host name of the server that we at this point should be connected to. Then, since we are just going to test the connection, I'm going step by step since this is a lower level library. So in this tutorial, I'm just covering the connection and then. Um, in this case, we need to disconnect after we connect to the server. Uh, so when we don't need to do anything else, we need to disconnect from the server. And we simply do it by calling this sh2lib underscore free function. And again, and as I, I've said initially, uh, all the practic practically all the, the functions from sh2lib receive uh, our handle, in, in this case, the address of our handle, in order to free the resources that were allocated to establish uh, the connection. And then from this point onward, we should no longer be connected to the server. So we are going to print this disconnected message indicating that um, all the work we are doing is done. So, and then I have this empty loop here because I'm not going to do anything uh, more than connecting to the server and then disconnecting. So I've already uploaded this code to my SP32. And I have already opened here the serial monitor, but I'm going to reset the device and do it again. So basically, at this point, it is connecting to the Wi-Fi network. And now it is OK. We have here this message connected, indicating that we have connected with success to the HTTP2 server. Then, as we uh, define in our code, it is uh, printing the host name. Note that it no longer has here the HTTPS uh, column slash slash. So it's just really the host name. So there's this transformation when we call the, the function to connect. And this, it's useful to know that we can access the host name uh, just looking into the, into the handle, into our HTTP2 sh2lib handle. And then after that, since we connected from the server, we, we get again here this message that we have defined in our code, indicating that we are no longer connected to the code. So this is it. Basically, it's very simple to do it. Um, it's not hard, although this is a, this is a, a lower level of, uh, library. Another thing that I would like to say is that the code that I'm showing here regarding the sh2lib um, function calls uh, is mainly based on the original example from IDF, which also makes use of this sh2lib handle. I'm going to leave the link in the description and I really encourage you to take a look at that example. It is a more complex example that covers a lot of uh, other stuff like doing uh, um, put requests and get requests, uh, but it has a lot of information that you can adapt and use in your uh, Arduino code. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.